Hi everyone, my name is Sanjeev Tripathi. In this video, I'm going to talk about mule flow and mule subflow. I will also explain what is the difference between mule flow and mule subflow and how we can invoke mule flow and mule subflow from the parent flow. When we write code for mule application, we need to create a flow. We can also have the subflow as well, but uh, at least one flow is required to write the code for mule application. We can have uh, then multiple more flows and we can have uh, zero or more subflow as well inside the mule application. And inside each flow or subflow, uh, we use the component, we use operation provided by connector and module to complete the flow code. So have two parts. First part contain event source co component. Second part contain one or more processor. A flow can have a event source like HTTP listener or a scheduler in the event source part and flow always have one or more processor inside processor part. Subflow does not have event source part. It only have one or more processors. There are two major difference between flow and subflow. First one, as we noticed in previous slide, flow can have a source event, but subflow does not have any source event. Another major difference is flow can have error handling. So you can define error handling for the flow, but inside the subflow, you cannot, you cannot define error handling. It does use the error handling defined by calling flow. There are three ways to invoke the flow inside the mule application. First one is use the event source. For example, if you are using HTTP listener as event source, when someone is calling that HTTP resource, the corresponding flow gets invoked. If you are using a scheduler as event source, whenever the scheduled job gets triggered, the corresponding flow gets invoked. Another way is use the flow reference component. So whenever the flow reference component gets executed inside the parent flow, the corresponding referenced flow gets invoked. The third way to invoke the flow is use the lookup function inside the data view. Subflow gets invoked by flow reference component. And during the build time, flow reference component is replaced by contents of subflow. Now I will move to the AnyPoint Studio and I will show you how to create flow and subflow and how to invoke flow and subflow. Now I will create a new Mule application. So click uh, create a new Mule application project. You can give any name. Let's give a flow, subflow, demo, click finish button. So new mule application has been created. Now add some flows. So we'll, we will uh, drag this HTTP listener from mule palette to here. So this is the default name of first flow. We can rename this. You can give the name first flow. Now we'll change the configuration of HTTP listener. Click plus button. We can keep these uh, properties default. Now add the resource path demo. 
Now let's add some processor. We'll add a logger component. We will uh, print the message log from first flow. Now let's add one more processor transform message component. We'll change the output to application JSON. Now we'll add few JSON fields. So first flow is ready. We have one event listener, HTTP listener, which will receive the message whenever events get triggered, someone calls this demo resource. And we have a two processor, logger and transform. Logger will log the message log from first flow and transform message will build the JSON message and send to the client. Let's save this. and start the application. So this application will be deployed inside embedded runtime. So application has been deployed. Let's invoke this from browser. We got the response. Let's observe the output. We got the logger output log from first flow. That's what we gave here in the logger component. So let me recap. This flow have one event source, HTTP listener. We have two processor, logger and transform, transform message. And this application is deployed on, a, on the port 8081. You see the port number here that is coming from default HTTP configuration. Let's add uh, one more flow. So we'll drag logger component to canvas, we will rename this flow to the second flow. And we will change the logger to log the message log from second flow. Now I will show you how to invoke second flow from first flow using a flow reference component. So I will select flow reference component from mule palette and drag it to the first flow. Now we'll change the property of the first flow reference. Here we can select the flow name that is being referenced. So we want to reference second flow, we'll select second flow. So now first flow is referencing second flow. Now this application has been deployed again, it's redeployed. Now let's remove this logs from here from console and invoke the application again. And let's observe the output. Now you see, we see the two output. First one is log from first flow, and second output is log for log from second flow. So what happens whenever the HTTP event comes, it goes first to the this logger from the logger from the first flow, and it prints this message. Then it comes to the flow reference. So flow reference invokes the second flow and it prints this message and then control goes back to the first flow 
and then it execute rest of the processor. So it build the message and send to the find. So now let's add one subflow as well. So inside the core, we'll search for subflow. We'll select subflow from palette and drag it on the canvas. Okay, let's change this default name to the subflow. Now we'll add a few processor to the subflow. We'll select logger component and put it inside subflow. In the message property, we'll change the log message to the log from subflow. Now instead of uh, invoking second flow from first flow, we'll invoke the subflow here. So we'll go to the flow name, we'll choose the subflow. So now we change the setting of uh, flow reference. Now this flow reference is referencing the subflow, not the first flow. Now this application may have deployed already. Remove the logs and now we'll go again to the browser and invoke this HTTP resource again. Now go back to the console and observe the console output. So here we saw the two messages are there, log from first flow and log from subflow. Because we are now uh, referencing subflow, not the first flow, that's why second uh, logger is printing log from subflow. So this is how we create the flow, subflow, and we invoke the uh, flow and subflow inside the code. I hope you like this video. If you like it, please subscribe it and also hit the like button. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.